ओके हेलो एवरी वन एम आई ऑडिबल टू यू ऑल ओके यू कैन कम्युनिकेट विथ मी ऑन द चैट बॉक्स ओके जस्ट एवरी वन टाइप यस इन द चैट बॉक्स एज वेल एज एवरी वन टाइप यूर एनरोलमेंट नंबर इन द चैट बॉक्स सो बेसिकली टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू कवर यूर क्वेश्चन इफ यू हैव एनी डाउट्स दो डाउट्स विल बी सॉल्व इन द टू डेज लेक्चर ओके सो विल वेट फॉर फाइव सिक्स मिनिट्स एंड देन वी विल स्टार्ट विद द मेन lecture main lecture part okay so meanwhile type yes in the chat box and your enrollment number okay so uh, i hope everyone has joined those who are there we we'll start with the today's session let me share the screen with you if you have any doubt just type it in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and ask me a question so first we will start with our revision okay so let's start with that i hope everyone has the written notes Just give me a moment okay i hope screen is visible to you all just type yes in the chat box perfect okay so we'll start with the first point that is introduction to power sector in india okay so for this we are going to go through the notes about conventional and non conventional sources of power and their share in a generation so when we talk about the conventional and non conventional power we have just give me a moment so for conventional and non conventional power we have thermal power plants we have hydro power plant we have nuclear power plant and then we are also focusing on diesel and gas turbine power plants so these power plants are basically conventional power plants whereas when we talk about the non conventional sources of energy electrical energy the <clears throat> non conventional sources are your solar energy wind energy tidal energy right so how these plants are basically contributing to the energy sector that we are going to understand so for this topic it can be a uh, uh, enlisting the different sources of power that way you need to prepare for this particular sub point right after that what are the advantages and disadvantages uh, i hope you all are carrying a notebook and pen with you so make sure you note down these points because when we talk about the sub point 1.1 that is conventional and non conventional sources of power uh, it can be asked this way that uh, what are the different types of conventional and non conventional sources of power and as i recently said to you what are the different types also you have all the data in your notebook so when you are preparing for your exams make sure you focus on this all the topics which are there in the syllabus okay next we have is a introduction to electricity act and its implication when we talk about the electricity act what are the important provisions of uh, just give me a moment yeah introduction to electricity act and what are the provisions which are made in the electricity act so it is given as well as when we talk about the power quality and electrical safety these all details are there and why the <clears throat> every state electricity boards are being formed how the electricity as a commodity is used okay so these all details we need to focus on while the improvisation of electricity act 2023 this point we need to understand after that there are new terms which are introduced in electricity act apart from the electricity rules the establishment of central and state electricity regulatory commissions these all points are mentioned in the notes so make sure you go through it okay after that very important i hope every one of you has drawn this diagram that is single line diagram of power system showing the generation transmission and distribution okay so it is very important to practice this diagram because some students are creating some mistakes in the voltage levels they are also having the there are chances that uh, you can be you know forgotting that names of the levels like primary distribution primary generation or secondary generation not secondary generation secondary transmission and secondary distribution okay 
so these are the points which may get confused and you may lose marks in this particular diagram next we have is national energy policy okay so when we talk about the national energy policy framework the framework points are given in your notebook so if you are having that uh, notebook written or you are missed that you may go through the uh, whatsapp chat also the arpit must have sent you okay so if you are not having ask cr to get the notes of the chapter 1 okay any doubt in chapter 1 till now if you have any doubt just type it in the chat box so that i can answer that query or the doubt okay now you can see here in the syllabus uh, there is four marks and four hours hours let it be but four marks is there so you may expect at least twice of the marks questions for example eight marks question can be asked from this chapter so make sure you go through all the points don't skip any small points uh, kisi bhi point ko option mein mat daliye isko pura acche tarike se prepare kijiye okay after that we have thermal power station thermal power plant okay so while going to the chapter number 2 we have 10 marks here so you can expect some 16 to 18 marks of the questions in the question paper about this and why i am focusing on the marks because there are students those are directly second year admitted students they need to go through all these topics once again after completing the notes okay so first point is that explanation of the system with schematic diagram everyone should have drawn the schematic diagram in their notebook or also we have done that activity of drawing the single line and schematic diagram on a paper right so just type yes if you have drawn that and practice that diagram in the chat box or if you have any doubt related to that just let me know okay next we have the point that is choice of site so when we talk about the thermal power plant we have the site which is related with the <coughs> cool availability of the cool because the majority of the fuel which is consumed in the thermal power plant is your cool and now the site the location of that project should be near to the cool site as well as when we talk about the thermal power plant the amount of electricity generated also produces the large amount of heat because the heat which is used for uh generating steam is also need to be taken out from the system because we need to have the reusable water in the thermal power plant right so to have that thermal power plant using that water again and again we need to convert that steam back to the water and during that time we need a concept called as a cooling water so availability of the large amount of water is necessary for the thermal power plant okay i hope i am audible to everyone and you are writing down these points these points are already with you and make sure you revise these topics and their answers okay now next is that whenever we talk about any thermal power plant or any power plant as per the type there are certain advantages and disadvantages of that particular technology so when we talk about the advantages the thermal power plant has a biggest advantage that its reliability as well as the thermal power plant has the time if you talk about the disadvantages the consumption of coal and consumption of these fuel materials and burning process leads to the not environmental friendly or we can say polluting the environment that is one of the biggest disadvantage you can see now when we talk about the thermal power plant next point we need to understand is that what are the different elements of or various equipments of the thermal power plant and their function so when you talk about the thermal power plant what are the different types of equipments which we know just type it in the chat box let me know everyone yes boiler turbine condenser right then we have different types of pumps then we have heaters water heaters then we have economizers then we have superheaters 
right then we have the system for uh, yeah you must have visited the gas turbine power plant as well right so similarly you have the emergency generator or emergency dg set there so these all are the equipments which we need apart from that we need a air filter air preheater right so these all equipments are there which we need to be uh, working in a proper condition so that our thermal power plant will work uh, cr jara dekho ki koi aur student join ho rahe hai kya uh, so that we will be finishing this revision as soon as possible let me know next we have is superheaters and economizers and treatment of flue gases so flue gases are basically the by product of the burning process like we talk about burning of the coal we can see that the flue gases is not just a mix of uh, smoke or it is not the just mix of fly ash it is also con connected with the heat so it is also connected with the heat energy for example the lots of amount of heat energy is being escaped through the chimney of the thermal power plant okay and for that reason you need to make sure that how these equipments like first one the air preheater second what is the second one that is a economizer these two equipments are basically extracting the heat from the flue gases which is flowing away from the boiler which is flowing away from the thermal power plant okay yahan tak clear hai sabko just type yes in the chat box moving ahead with this next we have that is flue gas and what exactly the treatment you need to do on the flue gas the first point which i just mentioned that is extracting all the heat from the flue gas second thing which is again very important that only burning of that coal is not attracting the generation of carbon dioxide in the burning process it also generates the sulfur dioxide it also generates certain amounts of gases which are not helpful or which we can say dangerous to the human beings and for that purpose we need to make an arrangement to remove the sulfur dioxide gas and to remove that gas sometimes we need to understand certain gases are non dissolved in the liquid certain gases need to get chemically treated and that is what purpose of flue gases and its treatment so flue gas desulfurization plant helps here for working on clearing or we can say less polluting the environment by providing the treatment on the flue gases apart from that <coughs> we have esp that is electrostatic precipitator which helps in removing the fly ash component from the flue gases so these all equipments diagram these all equipments working principle these all equipments advantages and disadvantages their types their materials these all data you need to revise these all data you need to understand and make sure you create the pointers what is the word pointer for the all answers which are there in the syllabus so make sure when you have these all pointers ready with you whatever the question can be asked in the exam you will be in a position to write down the answers okay moving ahead to the chapter number 3 but before that i am asking you do you have any doubt about the chapter number 2 if you have any doubt query just type it in the chat box okay i just wait for a moment if someone is typing or if all it is if all all of you are good to go we can go to the chapter number 3 just let me know in the chat box okay so i think there is no any question so we can go with the chapter number 3 chapter number 3 is related with the hydroelectric power station it is one of the well known and well history which is there for the hydro power plant is that the people are storing water at a higher elevations and then using that water for its natural gravity driven flow to the downhill area and that is where the construction of dam 
and construction of hydroelectric power station plays a role in generation of electricity okay when we talk about the systems first point that is 3.1 that is explanation of the system through the schematic diagram and when we talk about the schematic diagram what are the components are there in the diagram first one we have the hill area which we need to draw second thing which we need to draw is a dam after that we need to draw the penstock as well as after that we need to draw a turbine house and power house in, in the downside area apart from that there is a two and three important points which are there that is first one is your surge tank tail rest headrest trash rack spillways as well as headrest and tail rest of hydroelectric power station now when we talk about the hydroelectric power stations and its location what are the different site selection criteria which we should follow okay that is another question that can be asked uh, many of people are asking this question that if we want to construct the hydroelectric power station where we should construct right what is that criteria for the site the first one we can say is that the availability of the rain catchment area because hydro power station is related with the water right okay i hope you all are with me are you with me okay so make sure when we talk about the hydroelectric power station site selection criteria the first point is that rain catchment area then elevation of that particular dam location so if the dam is located at the higher elevation and the water catchment area is more then definitely the hydro power station will run smoothly apart from that what are the average rainfall in that particular area so if you talk about the average rainfall we will get the data of rainfall from the imd department right after that we have next point that is how that elevation is accessible by the people to transport the materials machineries and manpower to the hilly area so if the availability of road availability of transportation arrangement availability of the manpower okay these all points are related with the choice of site okay then we have advantages disadvantages in that we have uh, the location of the plant and its advantages related with the environment like thermal power plant the hydro power plant does not produce any smoke any flue gases right and also also there is there is a environmental friendly we can say the hydroelectric power station creates energy environmental friendly energy but the disadvantage we can say the area which is required for constructing this plant including the catchment area of the dam is so huge then that's the reason sometimes for constructing the artificial dams we need to relocate the people from the local community so these are the different disadvantages of the hydroelectric power station apart from that as we seen in the thermal power plant we need to understand the working and its importance of all the significance of these components like dam trash rack spillways surge tank fence stock after that headrest and tailrest because these all individual topic can be framed into a question for individual answers okay so make sure you give the detailed overview while doing the revision while doing your study make sure you focus on all these points which are mentioned in the total syllabus right after that we have classification of hydroelectric power stations on the basis of load head and poundage so when we talk about the basis of load it is which type of load that power plant is handling there are two types of load which we talk about that is uh, as per its value and as per its usage type for example base load plant and peak load plant and apart from that what is the capacity of that individual plant whether it is a small hydro power plant medium hydro power plant or a large hydro power plant and according to that 
the classification of uh, hydro power plant is happening after that what is the head head means what is the height or we can say what is the elevation of that particular plant on comparison with the sea level sea level ke comparison if we do with the height of the elevation we can come to know the three types low head medium head high head power plants after that pondage runoff river two pond single these all are the different types of hydroelectric power station as a classification you have one chart you have one chart which you can use to revise this topic after that and another interesting topic about the hydroelectric power station that is pumped storage unit now many of you must be gone through this while i was explaining you in the classroom about the pump storage unit that is whenever there is a excess amount of electricity available and as you know the rule for electricity is that whenever electricity is generated we need to consume that okay so when we are going to consume that that time we have to understand that electricity is not generated not created just transform from the one form of energy into another form of energy and for that purpose the excess energy during the night time is used to pump all the water from the downhill to the uphill and then the water is basically used as a battery or the energy storage device and when there is a peak load condition that same water can be taken from the top of the hill to the down of the hill through the turbine and so that electricity can be generated during the peak load condition i hope this point is clear to you everyone okay perfect moving ahead with this what are the different types of turbines used in the hydroelectric power station when we talk about the hydroelectric power station the medium which is used to rotate the turbine is water or we can say it is in a liquid condition so it has a higher viscosity also this particular water or we can say the liquid which is flowing to the turbine as per the elevation as per the head of the plant that location is basically creating an impact on selecting the turbine for example if the high head plant is there where the height of the plant is basically deciding the usage of impulse type of turbine what is the word impulse type of turbine and if the head is low or we can say there is a lower height of the plant or a dam we can say then that time we need to use the reaction turbine the reaction turbines are used in the hydroelectric power station also has different examples like kaplan francis and propeller and bulb type turbine as well so these all are the different types of uh, turbines used all the diagrams of these turbines are with you you already have gone through the diagram detailed drawing of this diagram of this turbine as well as its working condition if you have any short of notes so if you have a short of notes on any topic you can just let me know in the chat box or through the cr i can definitely provide you that apart from that i think that i should provide you the question bank so that you can prepare those questions and you can prepare for your exams i hope uh, you are willing to have a question bank from me if you want just type yes in the chat box if you want a question bank just let me know that type yes in the chat box those who want okay moving ahead with this chapter number 4 okay arpit wants okay himesh also wants okay so moving ahead with this next that is a chapter number 4 that is a nuclear power station so when we talk about the nuclear power station the very first thing which we need to follow is that i have shared a book with you right so in that book there are diagrams which you need to follow for this chapter if you are not having that book with you make sure the cr sends you again okay so in that book we have the diagrams for 
BWR, PWR uh, reactors as well as the complete schematic diagram which is near about same. What I am saying you near about same to the thermal power plant. In the thermal power plant there is a steam producing steam generating unit that is named as boiler but in nuclear power station that same purpose is being done or is being driven by the device or equipment called as reactor and don't go with it just a name it is one of the major concern of the nuclear power station to work with that reactor because the reactor is giving you the access to the heat which is generated during the chain reaction of using radioactive material what is the word radioactive material like uranium thorium plutonium like that okay and in that particular reactor the reaction leads to the generation of large amount of heat and if you want to control that heat you need certain devices components called as moderators coolants reflectors and the graphite is one of the important material which is used for nuclear power station so these all points you need to revise before your exam make sure you do it properly and those who are uh, avengers of the class make sure you help the people help the students those who want to improve their score okay so it is appeal to all the avengers jo jo hai avengers aapke class mein unko bolo ki jo students hai jinko help ki zarurat hai wo ek dusre ko help karenge main hu hi aapke liye aapko kuch bhi doubt hai you can directly ask me but before that make sure your friend helps you okay going ahead with this a very important point for the nuclear power station is that disposal disposal of your nuclear waste because when we talk about the generation of nuclear waste it is also a radioactive waste which can lead to a cancerous stage and which can lead to a damage to the human race while if it is coming in contact with particular human those who the handling that particular nuclear waste okay so make sure when we talk about the nuclear waste disposal maybe it is a solid type liquid type or gaseous type nuclear waste the arrangement which are done and how the nuclear disposal of the waste is done that can be a question important question for you all apart from that the only environmental impact creating power plant is not just your thermal power plant also the nuclear power station also creating impact on the environment and for that reason we need to focus more on the disposal of nuclear waste okay just type yes in the chat box so that i can come to know that you all are there and you are understanding the concept okay so this is the revision class in which we are going to <coughs> emphasize on what are the points we should focus and what are the points we should basically give our attention to okay so if you give that attention to that particular chapter make sure it is uh, related with almost 8 marks and earlier one was 10 marks so just make it double okay so 8 becomes 16 so 16 marks can be a possible uh, you know weightage for that particular chapter okay so i hope it is very well said that for 16 marks you need to prepare for this particular chapter going ahead with the chapter number 5 till now do you have any doubt about the chapter number 4 just let me know in the chat okay so moving ahead with this we we'll go to the chapter number 5 that is a diesel and gas turbine power station so when we talk about the diesel power station the very first thing which we come across is a portable diesel generation which we see sometimes uh, during the functions or during the emergency conditions or the road conditions uh, road construction work and projects where we find such diesel generations but apart from that there is a certain uh, we can say 
industries where diesel generator plays an important role okay so what is the first uh, benefit of using a diesel generator that the diesel which is a fuel is easy to carry in a container or it is easy to carry in a tanker something like that and because of that the energy density of the diesel generating unit is again more so these are the things which you need to understand second point uh, when we talk about the diesel generation plant for you as a student the diagram is very complicated okay so make sure you practice that diagram of schematic of diesel generation because in that there is a tank for diesel and there is a all day tank then day tank okay so there are certain things which you need to understand right moving ahead with this we have operating principle of diesel generation that is how this diesel generation plant is working what are its components what are the different uh, lubrication cooling oil requirements these all details you need to understand revise before exam okay apart from this you need to focus on what are the different advantages okay what are the different advantages of uh, advantages and diesel disadvantages of the diesel power plant also applications is again an important point because application of diesel power station in uh, industry plays an important role because uh, as per the application as per the application the diesel power plant components uh, varies or it, we can say that it is having its own impact for example the silencer which is used for reducing the noise of a diesel power station is vary as per the size and capacity of the diesel power station so where we are using it if we are using it near the hospital the exhaust of the diesel power plant is uh, such a way handled that it is not polluting the nearby environment and similarly there are certain applications where diesel power generation is needed in that time we need to focus on there is a minimum vibration minimum noise so these all are the different aspects which you need to understand okay moving ahead with this we have the next part in the chapter number 5 that is the gas turbine power plant gas turbine power plant itself has its own uh, method of using the gas as a primary fuel and the compressed air which is created by the compressor so compressor turbine and <coughs> your fuel burning or we can say combustion chamber so these are the main primary components of the gas turbine power plant as you have visited the gas turbine power plant you have much better idea about this section in the syllabus so make sure you don't uh, take it as a granted thing that you know everything because you have industrial visit aisa kuch socho mat iska bhi properly practice karo okay so out of your 70 60 students ka class only 26 students are there okay so if you have someone who is not there uh, make sure you tell them okay what we have discussed okay okay moving ahead with this chapter number 6 now as we go to the chapter number 7 and 8 for the some students we are discussing it for the first time because they were not there in the live or a lecture in the classroom uh, college ke lecture mein wo shayad nahi the unke liye ye first time main aapko repeat karne wala hu chapter number 7 and chapter number 8 so make sure you be present agar aapne abhi tak ye meeting join nahi kiya hai to arpit sabko bolo ki join karo jaldi okay going to the next point that is solar power station wind power station tidal power station and biomass power station for all these we have the notes with us which we need to read study and draw the diagram of each and every component of solar power station wind power station and tidal power station and for this and that particular uh, biomass we have the diagrams from the book to so, agar aapko question aa raha hai aapke mind mein ki sir iske diagrams कहाँ से लेना है तो इट इज ऑल्सो देर इन द बुक विच आई शेयर यू 
सो न्यूक्लियर पावर स्टेशन के डायग्राम्स एंड नॉन कन्वेंशनल पावर स्टेशन के डायग्राम्स वो आपको दोनों वो बुक से मिलेंगे वो पीडीएफ से मिलेंगे अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट आई एम ऑल्सो शेयरिंग सम क्वेश्चन बैंक विथ यू सो दैट यू कैन प्रिपेयर यूर सेल्फ फॉर दैट क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम ईच चैप्टर सो दैट यू कैन कम टू नो कि on this particular topic like solar power station uh, what are the different types of ways that question can be asked in the examination so excuse me uh, moving ahead with that chapter number 6 is over now going to the chapter number 7 so chapter number 7 plays an important role for understanding the economics of power generation now why economics of power generation is important i have shared a link of a video lecture with you right so how many of you have gone through if you are not gone through uh, i am sharing that link again with you or arpit can do that for you in your group so you should go through that uh, video lecture and you can come to know about what are the different types of uh, economics and cost related concepts are shared but apart from that i am sharing with you right now okay so give a focus full attention type yes in the chat box everyone perfect so first thing which we need to know about the economics of power generation is very much needed as a today's uh, we can say requirement because uh, what i suggest you or what i uh, tell to my student that energy is everything and everything is energy so energy requires resources and resources are not free for all of us and for that reason we need to identify what are the economic factors which are affected because of this energy demand because everyone those who are demanding electricity or demanding energy needs to pay back for the usage or we can say consumption of the consumption of the what energy right so what are the basic factors which affects the selection of tariff we cannot say that electricity can be sold at this particular amount electricity is sold at that particular amount before understanding what are the cost involved right and for that reason we need to make sure that we understand this topic okay so moving ahead with the first topic what is the load curve why load curve is used how the load curve is generated from where we get all these data okay so we'll going with the chapter number 7.1 that is load curve load duration curve and what is the importance of this curve okay moving ahead with this uh, first is load curve what we can say about the load curve is that it is a graphical representation which is showing the electrical load and electrical demand now when you talk about the electrical load and demand which is varying with the time so as per the time morning time evening time afternoon time electrical load on the system is changing it is having the different aspects which we need to showcase on the curve or we can say the graphical representation so we have two axes that is x axis and y axis the horizontal axis is the x axis which has <coughs> the time and vertical axis we have the electrical energy demand so at what time how much energy was needed is mentioned on the load curve now apart from that when we see there is a sudden spike or we can say sudden hike in the sudden hike in the load value on the y axis we call it as a peak load okay it is called as the highest demand during that particular time frame after that we have the base load now what do you mean by base load that this is the demand which is there continuously in the that particular electrical system for example if we have the power system which is running for one particular village or one particular uh, area that particular time we need to understand that base load is continuous in nature it means the amount of electricity which is needed continuously that 
amount is called as a base load plant moving ahead with this if you talk about the load curve why load curve is important because load curve helps you for generation capacity so we can direct the generators that this is the x amount of electricity needed at y time and that time your generation should be available also for just give me a moment also for peak load condition okay am i audible to you all just type yes in the chat box uh, if you talk about the okay perfect so if you talk about the uh, planning of the generations for the peak load condition we can build up for that capacity if we have the proper uh, load curve ready for our power generations we come to know that this is the time at which we want this much of electricity generated after that we will give the scheduling as well as we will give the uh, benefits of uh, this load scheduling so that there is a minimum <clears throat> we can say losses of uh, wastage of electricity because as we all know electricity is not generated not created or it is just transformed from one uh, you know form of energy into another form of energy okay so moving ahead with this load curve you come to know then we have load duration curve so if we talk about the overall system what was the maximum load how much time it was there it is all represented on the load duration curve so it gives us an idea that power system was loaded for x amount of load for y number of hours in that particular days for example summer days or uh, we can say deepavali days right during that time how the electricity is being used is all showcased by the load duration curve after that there are certain reserves of coal or any other fuel which is used in the power station and because of the load duration curve and load curve you come to know that how much storage you need to do how much consumption you need to do and by that you will be operating efficiently the <coughs> just give me a moment you will be giving an importance to the usage of electricity okay moving ahead with this next point that is important terms and factors related to the economics of power generation okay this one okay moving ahead with this that is there are certain things which you need to know uh, which i was also discussed in the classroom about this that is the capital cost what is the initial cost of building that particular power plant including the cost for purchasing the land construction cost equipment cost right after that we have the operating cost operating cost is a ongoing cost like for example we need to run that plant we need a fuel we need a labors we need maintenance this these all are called as a operating cost after that we have the major component of the cost that is the fuel cost the cost of raw material like coal gas oil which is being used in the power generation apart from that certain cost are considered as a fixed cost what is the word fixed cost and these cost are basically do not get changed or do not get varied okay so these cost are not uh, which are you know we can say uh, they are not variable cost they are fixed cost they have their own identity like for example uh, we have to pay the salaries to the people we have to understand the uh, depreciation of the assets and for that reason we need to understand these fixed cost apart from that there are variable cost so variable cost are directly the uh, we can say direct relation with the uh, we can say the generated amount of electricity because whatever the amount of money which you are coming in to the company that is exclusively for the electricity which we are selling to the customers and for that reason the variable cost is dependent on the amount of electricity generated and which is sold to the consumer which is not at all dependent like 
the plant was working for 24 hours or something it is not like that we need to understand that the fuel is burned with a hundred percent value for that particular variable cost after that we need to understand capacity factor we need to understand the load factor what are the different types of fuels availability fuels cost how the plant is working efficiently that you also need to understand plant efficiency also we need to understand what is the plf what is the word plf plant load factor okay these all details you need to know and revise for the chapters second point that is 7.2 i hope i am clear to everyone perfect now next is that when we talk about generation of these plants and connecting it to the grid we need to select the number of generators and size like what are the different number of generators which we can use and what is the size of that plant for example uh, just give me a moment okay so hello am i audible just type yes in the chat box okay perfect so when we talk about the selection of the number of and size of the generators based on the load for example if we have the amount of peak demand we need to consider certain profiling of the plants for example thermal power plant requires eight hours to start the electricity production for hydro power plant it requires hardly half an hour to produce to its maximum capacity for diesel generator it is just five seconds to start the electricity generation and for that reason which generation to stop which generation to start what is the scheduling of that particular generator is all dependent on the load dispatch center what is the word load dispatch center okay and for that we need all these data so first one is peak demand then we need to know about the base load and peak load what are the different reserves we have for example the amount of water which is stored in the dam okay so if it is in the dam we have the water which is equivalent for six months of electrical supply and for that reason we need to locate the hydroelectric power station for six months of usage before the rain is actually starting okay so before the start of the rain we have at least six months of period where we can use the hydropower plant okay then we have to understand what are the different schedules of maintenance and reliability of that particular plant so these all details which we need to consider while we are considering the cost or we can say the economics of the power generation apart from that we have the base load and peak load stations that is a chapter number 7.4 base load and peak load station certain stations are basically used for 24 by 7 operations whatever the demand on the load or we can say demand is available on the grid we are not concerned about it we are just using that plant 24 by 7 and that is considered as a base load plant what is the word base load plant and there are certain plants which are specifically designed to give the short term demand okay for example high electricity consumption of the plant during the first thing that is a peak load condition okay these are like gas turbines hydro plants these are very flexible which are very easily uh, we can say easily we can say give the uh, electricity okay got it moving ahead with the next point that is 7.5 so we are very close to the last chapter so make sure you uh, ask any question if you have uh, or we will go to the last chapter let me know the last point is hydrothermal coordination so when we talk about the hydrothermal coordination how much percentage of hydropower plant should be generating electricity and how much thermal power plant should be generating electricity is considered in the hydrothermal coordination okay so when we talk about the hydrothermal coordination hello hello am i audible to you all okay okay perfect so hydrothermal coordination helps you to understand 
what are the different uh, types or ways by which we are selecting the number of units of the generator for example if there is a rainy season which season rainy season that time the hydropower plant can work at its maximum capacity but when there is a summer season when there is a no rain available that time using a hydropower plant may be reducing our reserves so when there is a rainy season the hydropower station is acting as a base load plant they are working 24 by 7 and when there is a peak condition in the summer time the hydropower station works as a peak load plant during the summer season and that is what we call it as a hydrothermal coordination and for all these points i am sharing a detailed notes with you so that you can write it in the uh, your notebook so that you can prepare it for your examination moving ahead with this last chapter if you have any doubt uh, in this just let me know or we can go ahead just let me know in the chat box we are going to the chapter number 8 now okay the last chapter for our revision arpit have you sent link to all the students or what is this only 22 students are there okay moving ahead with this uh, last chapter no focus okay 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 now let's focus on the last chapter uh, the v, the points which we have discussed earlier about the cost involved in the salary of the people now here we are giving it a name called as a fixed cost then we have semi fixed cost then we have cost of the using fuel that is a running cost okay so this way uh, you need to use the pdf which i have shared with you earlier for this concept as well okay so in this economics of power generation how the cost of the power generation is calculated that we need to understand okay moving ahead with this what is a fixed cost fixed cost is like whether you produce electricity you don't produce electricity you sell products sell the electricity or not you need to pay and that is what the salary the maintenance the insurance interest depreciation right property tax rent of a land or a building which you are using these all are the examples of fixed cost there are semi fixed cost as well which are related with the maybe you are generating electricity and that costs are there for example if there is any frequent failure of the machine cost involved with the regular replacement of the machineries these all things are come under the semi fixed cost then we have running cost running cost is like dependent on the consumption of fuel consumption of chemicals lubrications coolant like that variable maintenance cost sometimes people work for more time you need to pay them over time so these all are the consideration of the running cost or we can say variable cost whenever the construction of the power plant happens the owner needs to borrow some capital and that borrowed capital attracts the interest and that interest is need to be paid on the semi fixed basis you have to pay it so these all are the things which are related with the costing or we can say the economics of the power station apart from that there is a straight line and diminishing value method for calculating the depreciation now this is a one of the important and most important concept to know that what is the depreciation like for example if you do some good thing what happen your parents appreciate you right they say that yes mera bachcha itna acha kuch kiya something like that or depreciation ka matlab hai ki agar aapne koi aapki kitab hai ya aapne kuch usko use nahi kiya for example to uski value jo hai wo kam ho jati hai for example if that plant is used for say 10 years after that 10 years its useful life the value of that plant becomes zero and when that plant's value becomes zero and you want the same output from that plant you need to create a new investment are you with me for example you bought a car or you bought a bicycle or you bought a vehicle which has its useful value for say 15 years of working condition life but after 15 years what is going to happen 
that vehicle is no longer in a working condition it is attracting the heavy maintenance charges and for that reason you need to understand you need to understand that depreciation of the asset happens and that is the reason you need to calculate that so every year every month you need to calculate the depreciation and for that i will share the <coughs> notes with you uh, so that you can go through these two chapters uh, information study material and you will solve the numericals as well on this particular topic okay so i think we will stop here for today if you have any doubt just let me know in the chat box and uh, if there is no any doubt we will stop here for today's lecture if you have any doubt just let me know in the chat box or you can ask me in the whatsapp group as well okay meanwhile uh, do properly study abhi diwali wagaire sab ho gaya hai abhi acche se padhai karo okay and make sure you prosper properly in exams also okay so wish you all the best we'll stop here for today if you have any doubt just ask me right now i hope there is no any questions from you all so we'll stop here for today okay so i hope you like today's lecture just let me know in the chat box and we'll stop here for the today's lecture thank you stop the recording